evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. At some point, though it's hard to imagine now, the current revolution will end. Ultimately, all revolutions do end. They can't be sustained. And when ours does, we'll wake up one morning in a country where we don't have to lie about everything all the time, where math is allowed, where we can acknowledge the profound and inherent differences between men and women without being fired for it. That day is coming. The question is, when it does come, what will be left of our society? We can't know the answer in detail, but here's what we're hoping for. We hope that reason remains. Reason, logic, the ability to think clearly and rationally. That's the one thing we can't lose. We're going to need it to rebuild. That's why, of all the moral atrocities being committed at the moment in the name of equity and inclusion, it's the relentless attacks on science that should command our special attention. So for the next hour, we're going to consider those attacks in some detail. And we're going to start with America's response to the COVID pandemic. When the coronavirus first arrived in our country last winter, most Americans uncritically accepted what the authorities said about it. They thought they could trust the people in charge. Few imagined that our leaders would leverage a public health emergency for their own political gain. That seemed like the one line that even politicians wouldn't cross. And yet almost immediately, they crossed it. Around the country, Democratic governors used quarantine restrictions to reward their allies and to punish their opponents. Abortion mills stayed open, but the police kept churches closed. You could buy weed, but you couldn't get your knee replaced. Demonstrations against the lockdowns were banned. Riots against Donald Trump were encouraged. Watch the governor of Michigan, for example, shamelessly explain the difference. It is probably not going to be safe to congregate in masses for quite a while. And it's heartbreaking. But we know that Michigan's not alone in this moment, that this is what is happening all across the country, that these big gatherings just can't safely happen right now. The death of George Floyd has once again shown a light on the systematic cycle of injustice in our country. To the overwhelming majority who have taken to the streets and protested peacefully, protesting historic inequities black Michiganders and those across the country are facing, I hear you, I see you, I respect you, and I support your efforts to enact real structural change in America. So you are no longer allowed to exercise your constitutional right of assembly unless it's to publicly support the Democratic Party. And it wasn't just the governor of Michigan. Gavin Newsom did the same thing in California. Phil Murphy did it in New Jersey. It was partisan politics posing as science. But, and this was the most amazing part, in the end, it was endorsed by actual scientists. And that's the part that should worry you. Doctors like Jennifer Nuzzo at Johns Hopkins University told us that structural racism was a bigger health threat than the coronavirus. So go ahead and loot Macy's. It's an important part of public health. For those who still believe that American science was on the level, this was a shocking moment. When did the people who are paid to be rational become corrupt religious zealots? When did our scientists become ayatollahs? Well, it happened years ago, it turns out. The rest of us just weren't noticing. In February of 2019, a piece was published in the journal Neurology, which, in case you don't read it, is one of the preeminent peer-reviewed publications in all of medicine. The piece was called Lucky and the Root Doctor. It described a physician's experience with a man in the Deep South called Reggie. Reggie was suffering from a severe neuromuscular disorder, which had left him blind. Modern science might have helped Reggie. This was the point of the piece. But he didn't want the help. Reggie believed he was blind because he had been cursed by a voodoo spell. That's what he told his physician. And then he refused treatment and left the doctor's office for good. Now, the doctor who wrote this piece about Reggie was a man called William Campbell. Campbell believed in Western science. He did not believe that voodoo is the cause of blindness. And the piece he wrote was designed to help other physicians communicate with patients like Reggie so those patients could receive effective medical treatment. Unfortunately, American medical journals are no longer allowed to criticize witchcraft. Criticizing witchcraft is racist. So the editor of Neurology, a man called Robert Gross, began a purge of his own publication. He fired the humanities editor, then he suspended the entire humanities section. And then to further atone, he hired what he described as a deputy editor for equity, diversity, and inclusion. Then Robert Gross, as if this wasn't enough, wrote a groveling apology letter for the piece, calling Campbell's article racist 
and acknowledging it had caused, quote, anguish. Nowhere in that letter did Robert Gross explain any of this. Why exactly is it racist to prefer Western medicine to witchcraft? Isn't that the whole point of our system? Gross never explained. He just declared it racist and moved on. So that's now the official policy of this country's top neurology journal, that witchcraft is the same as Western medicine. And how dare you say otherwise? Where does this leave you? If you were nervous about brain surgery before, this is not comforting news. How long before your doctor sacrifices a chicken in the operating room? That's a serious question. We can no longer say that science is better than voodoo. That's racist. Something similar has happened in the world of economic research. One of the top business journals in the world, the Strategic Management Journal, deleted a paper from the internet without any explanation. Now, the key thing to know is all of the numbers in that paper were accurate. The data were right. No one claimed otherwise. The piece went through peer review. It was published. The piece was published because it was called this, quote, examining investor reactions to appointments of black top management executives and CEOs. Now, we don't know what those reactions were. It might be interesting to know, but you can't know because the original version of the piece has disappeared. It's gone. It's now in the remote cave where we hide uncomfortable facts. It's been replaced by a heavily revised version. So what's the truth? We can't know. This is the definition of corruption, but it has spread through science. Take a look at the jobs postings at Nature magazine. Nature was once the foremost science publication on the planet. What Nature is looking for now in its employees has nothing whatsoever to do with science. In fact, it's anti-science. Here's one recent job posting they posted on Twitter. Quote, as part of our commitment to foster diversity and inclusion, we are looking for a black candidate with a passion for science communication based in the UK for a full-time paid news internship. End quote. So the thing that jumps out is that no whites or Asians or Hispanics are allowed. Is that legal? Of course it's not legal. But that's not really the point. The bigger problem, and it is bigger than civil rights law, is that the people we trust to make the most important decisions in our society, the essential decisions, what kind of medical research do we fund, who gets treatment and who doesn't, who lives and who dies, the people who make those decisions are no longer rational. They have lost the ability to think empirically. Equity is now their god. They no longer believe in science. That's a real problem. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.